VH1 presents Jazz Legends, Ramey Jenkins. To be a great jazz improviser, an improvisational jazz musician, you have to be inspired in the present moment. Now, now, try it now. In the summer of 1939, Ramey Jenkins was just another run-of-the-mill albino jazz musician on the mean streets of New Haven, Connecticut. No one had any idea that a legend was about to be born. Uh, my name's uh, Elroy Stump. See, I was the uh, trombone player back in those days. Now, uh, Ramey, <laughs> he couldn't play anything. You see, the boy was tone deaf, proper tone deaf. But uh, we let him hang around anyway, even though he didn't have any talent. He did have a truck. A 1939 Ford Beauregard, Cobalt Blue. <laughs> now about that eye. See, we were playing up in a little club up in uh, Connecticut. And I tell you what, we let old uh, Ramey sit in and play the cymbals on the last song of the last set on the count of everyone had already left. Everyone that is except for one old man in the back. I was, I was sitting at the bar, uh, really just, just trying to stop this waitress who was there. Oh, beautiful. Mulatto. I like them when they got the curls, you know what I mean? But that, the, the caramel kind of skin. She had these eyes that were like almonds just staring at you. One of them went a little to the side, okay, but I, that? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the night in question, I, uh, I look up at the stage, I hear this commotion, and the, uh, the, the trombone player, his slide, just flies right out of his trombone, and uh, it hits the uh, the little cymbal player right in his eye, and his, his eye just pops out, it goes flying like like uh, three rows, I think it was. I never I never seen an eye fly like that. most beautiful thing I ever heard. After that, I mean, we, we knew we, well, we knew we had the next big thing. We, we, uh, we sold 20 million albums, you know. 20 million albums in the first day, in Denmark alone. From the moment the first album went platinum, it was, it was, oh. Randy felt so much pressure to top that first riff really started wearing on him. Ramey worked tirelessly to come up with another stroke of genius. That first riff, shabba da big did out of wow, was completely improvised. Now I hope that you realize lightning, it doesn't strike twice. Thought Ramey would take a break or at least leave the stage during a violent thunderstorm. Sure enough, stayed out there and created a sound that no one else was doing. Singing at the 1947 Newport Jazz Festival and refusing to leave the stage despite a heavy rainstorm, Ramey was hit by lightning. Now, Ski Dot and W Dot and W R was even more popular than the first record, Shop Da Doot and Dot and Doody Way. That's when the epiphany came that all great art comes from pain. Horrible, flesh searing pain. You see, uh, that right there was the beginning of the salad days. After that, we put out a whole series of hit records, you know, starting with uh, The Razor's Edge. And uh, it's dark in here. And then the uh, seminal record, I just nailed my balls to this chair.
oh, baby, it was magical. You had to be there. I was. Ramey almost didn't make it to the hospital that night. Took a whole lot more out of him than we thought. I mean, <clears throat> his balls were savagely separated. After that, he was never the same. After the nut thing, he never really did anything after that. Which is good, you know, it's, uh, it's important to, uh, to just fade out gracefully rather than keep going for too long and bleeding all over the stage. I thought I was done with Ramey Jenkins, but uh, legends never die. I was at a really difficult point in my career and I stayed there until Lance Bass gave me an old Ramey Jenkins LP. Changed my life, man. If you listen really closely to Cry Me a River, you can specifically hear me yanking out tufts of my taint hair. Cry me a... Cry me a... I couldn't have got there emotionally without Ramey Jenkins. The cat changed my life. Thank you, Ramey. Years after he first discovered his unique voice, Ramey's legacy lives on. At the age of 90 and terribly scarred, he's experiencing a remarkable renaissance. Now that I'm 90, I wake up in the morning in agonizing pain. My elbow is getting gone from the sledgehammer on this shoulder from the hack. My knee, put my neck from the thumb tack, the tacks in the nip of my neck, and the, of course, my kneecap from the semi truck. Get up and pull up. I would stop, you know, and try to alleviate it, try to live a different way, but I'm making so much money, it doesn't make sense to give up all that pay. This doesn't make any sense in the point. Skinner brother! It's a microphone! The microphone! I know, I know, I know. It's okay. It's okay, Fluffy. It's alright now. <laughs>